You know what I'm saying? He now has light in the womb. He's scaring the baby before they come in the world and introducing them to light. Of course, there's a couple of people here who may have trotted that old path of Freemasonry and you think you know what you're talking about. But the question comes up, what does a Master Mason trade the G in for? And they say, well, a past master trades a G in for the sun. That's Freemasonry. A master mason trades a G in when he becomes a past master and replaces it with the sun. And they tell him that sun is rock. You follow that? So now what state is the world in? Please, don't answer too quickly. What state is the world in if it needs the sun to light it up? Look up there, it's black, yet there are more suns out there than the one we see. Why is it not lit up? Because darkness dominates the light. You cut the light on in the dark. When you see a person, you know you don't really see the person. All you see is light reflecting off them. Please don't believe dark, go check it out. When you, everything you think you see, you don't really see. You see light reflecting off of them and it's giving you that picture. You see in darkness. You stay in a state of darkness. And God was in darkness when he said, let there be light. Caucasians live in light, see in light and stay in light. You see, and that's why everything gotta be lit up. Otherwise you're not safe. But when you want to go to sleep, you cut it off. When you should be unsafe, you should have the lights on. Some people say, I can't sleep unless the light's on. Your soul is bathed in chaos. You should feel safe in darkness. <laughs> you should feel comfy in darkness. You know why? Because when you're cold, what do you do? No, you ball up into a little knot like a little baby because you feel comfortable and you know when that you know what that's a remembrance of when you was in the womb of your mother in darkness you are safe in darkness they spent millions of dollars reversing that information to making you think light is safe god is in darkness watch this the world is lit up correct Let's think of two places, heaven and hell. I want you to give me, tell me something about hell. What's one of the first things that come to your mind when I say hell? Fire. Is that darkness or light? Light. 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 <laughs> so now, who dwells in hell? The devil. Okay. And the hell, and hell is lit up by... So the devil dwells in, and the light is the fire. So God must not dwell with the devil. So God must be, light can only exist if kindled and stimulated by things on the physical plane. If there's no oxygen in the air, fire won't burn. Now, can God's fire ever go out? So then God must not be in fire something ignited you with me God must dwell in not just darkness but in triple darkness three stages three times three darkness <laughs> that's dark because you exist in darkness so God's darkness got to be three stages darker than yours so there now listen again watch it can God dwell in earth then? Catch yourself. It's in the Bible. Can God dwell in earth? But when he's in earth, is he in light or is he in darkness? Let me go back to the Bible. And I'll start before I go there by saying that you're conceived in the womb, in darkness. You're in the womb in darkness. God said, right, I put my spirit in to man and man became a living soul so God placed a portion of himself 
inside human beings. You with me? And human beings walk in this world of light. And God is inside the human being, inside darkness. <laughs> so even God in Christ on earth is still in the heart of Christ in darkness. God never stepped into the light. Men step into the light and the light blinds man. You hear me? Cut out the light. Now check this story. Cut out the light, put you in the middle of a room, pitch black, no sound, and your body will disappear. You become the room. You become boundless. Put you in a room. Got yourself there? And it's pitch black and you see no walls. Can you get you there? You're in the center of the whole universe. <laughs> no walls. Everything and everybody is revolving around you. Because God is in you. And God is the cook or the center of the universe. So wherever you are, God is. And wherever God is, he's in the center of all things. So if I'm sitting in this side of the room and you're sitting on that side of the room, we're both in the center of the universe to each of us. That's how well God planned it. That's what they mean by God is all places and all times and everywhere. Wherever you are, God is. And God speaks to you too. Whenever you get ready to do the wrong thing, you say, well, there's a little voice inside. Ain't no little voice. That's a big voice, nigga. You just don't listen. It tells you, don't do that. Don't take that. Don't smoke that. Don't put that needle in your arm. Don't steal that. And then another voice, your voice, the voice of light, said, God, go ahead, man. There's three cookies. Take one. They'll never even know it. So God walks with you all the time. And Christ said it. What did he say? Is it not written in your... Check that statement. Because here he is supposed to be a Hebrew and supposed to be an Israelite. And he's quoting the Psalms. But he's not referring to it as our Lord. Or, if he was God, my Lord, he said to them, Is it not written in your law? Now check this out. I said, Ye are gods. You hear that? Was Christ God then? He said it right there. Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. <coughs> he said, I'm God, and that law is for you. And in that law, I told you, you are God. But all of you are the children of the Most High. Don't get too cocky now. Don't get too uppity, nigga, because I put you in your place. <laughs> and God puts people in their place. Right? I know those people in Turkey are in their place. How many people are they up to now? 30,000 dead people in one earthquake? Allahu Akbar. That's Muslim country there. That ain't Christian country. All the Muslims in the world have to stop and say, Where was Allah? Ain't a kind of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's in Arabic, where was Allah? <laughs> when can a who? That's in Sudanese, where was he? In Arabic. And they can't tell you. You know why? Because the Muslims started getting cocky. So God had to remind the Muslims that he don't have a name that y'all could pronounce. <laughs> you know what I'm Because if you could pronounce his name, it wouldn't be his name. Because if you could pronounce, this is going to sound crazy. Y'all can stay with me here now. If you could pronounce God's name, then you would have mastered a part of God. Even down to the fact that you're able to just pronounce his name and thus get his attention. Yeah, he don't have a name that y'all could pronounce. 
I'm saying? Because if you could pronounce his name, it wouldn't be his name. Because if you could pronounce, this is going to sound crazy. Y'all can stay with me here now. If you could pronounce God's name, then you would have mastered a part of God. Even down to the fact that you're able to just pronounce his name and thus get his attention. <laughs> he would no longer be moving at his own will. He'll be moving at your command just by virtue of the fact that you know his name. Did you hear that? Did I lose anybody? Do I gotta say it again? One more time then. If you know God's name, what's your name? Sharonda. This is Sharonda. If I went on that side of the room and I said, Sharonda, you'd go. And you'd be at my command because I threw out a tone that represents you. So you would have surrendered to my call. You hear me? All right. Religious people would like to make you believe that the way you contact God is that you say, Allah, Jesus, Theos, Jehovah, Yahweh. They want to make you think that that's how you contact and make touch with God. But if God responded to you, he would be your servant and you not his. He would be responding to your command or your demand. And God doesn't do that. And that's why the Hebrews who fathered the New Testament, which fathered or mothered the Quran, tell you, we don't use the name of God. We don't know it. And in the largest worldwide, they say the true meaning and sound of God's name has been lost. Or that the few that do know it don't dare speak it. Now, who would know it? Huh? You. Not me. <laughs> would God know his name? Don't answer so quickly. Would God know his own name? No. Because God wouldn't have a name. Who named him? <laughs> and what would be the reason? See that? Who named him? And why? Why would God need a name? You know why God would need a name? Because some mortals want to make God a noun. Because when they make God a noun, they're able to place him as a person, a place, or a thing. And we are not happy about mysteries. We're not happy about the unknown. We want to know things. That's the inquisitive creature we are. So we want to name God something that we can say, Jesus, okay, Allah, all right. And then I start saying what? Um, what does Jesus mean? Then I got to give you a meaning. What does Christ mean? What, Christ, what does Allah mean? Jehovah, what does Jehovah mean? Well, it's, Four letters. What do they mean? Well, it's a yard, that's a hand, it's a hay. That's... We keep dicing it down. <laughs> and that only worked as long as hydrogen was the lightest atom. <laughs> but now that scientists have come to the realization that hydrogen is not the lightest atom, then God don't have a name. Because God don't sum up to anything. You hear me? He doesn't sum up to anything. He is not to be weighed. He is not to be labeled, placed, confined. God is. Doc, God is what? That too. <laughs> Doc, God is where? Yep. God is who? Mm. God is. And when mortals try to place God in any place other than the darkness that exists before the lights and after the light, because God in his mystery moves to a lit world in an unlit heart. You. God moves through this world in you. You follow that? Is that where? No, only if he's only in you will it be where. Because then it would be there. Because where and there 
work together. But where's the there? There. But if it's in you, 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 and everybody here, then he can't become a there, and therefore you cannot make him anywhere. You with me? God is. You are naturally linked to God. You are part of God, and God is a part of you. God, some say, is love. Right? Imagine that for a minute. Imagine the embodiment of all love for everything, every kind of way imaginable. And then imagine if God loved you, how much that'll hurt. <laughs> you hear me? If God is touched through compassion and concern, the weight of the touch through compassion and concern would crush you. He would crush you accidentally because he loves you. If he is power and his lights are getting energy from the universe channeled through wires and lit up, if you ever touch God's hand, my God, you are in for the shock of your life. The power, you can be electrocuted by that light. Imagine if you touched into the source of all the energy in the universe, what would happen to you? You, you know the funny thing? You wouldn't go anywhere. Well, there's really no place to go where he's not. <laughs> you won't be what you are would be the problem. You know what I'm saying? He does not need us contemplating on this level. He needs to have us contemplating on the level of God is in my image as the Lord Jesus Christ and he looks like me and he's coming back to save you. That's where he needs you. He doesn't need you to start expanding the power and the glory of God beyond the physical composition. He don't need that because you'll start to make a link and you'll start to laugh at some of the things that are taking place. And then he'll call you crazy because you'll look at things that people are mad about and you'll laugh. Because you say, how could it happen if God didn't will it? How could it happen if God didn't want it? So everything that happens is the will of God? You say, well, what about the devil? Well, where did he come from? Who made him? God. So the devil is the will of God? Why? Huh? Balancement to what? Balancement to what? Not good and bad. Because God, according to doctrine and theology, God is good and devil is bad. The devil is not equal to God, so they're definitely not rivals. Because God predates the devil. Is that not true? So the rival to the devil is man. And the God in Man, the good of you is the rival to the devil. The devil is out for you. The devil can't mess with God. Go read the book of Job. Go to the book of Job. When the devil got before God in the book of Job, he was what? Humble. God said, where you been at? Which is very strange. <laughs> Which strikes me as very strange that God had to ask somebody where they was at. Where you was at? And he answered, I was walking to and fro in the earth and God didn't see him. God takes breaks. He's not watching all things at all times. That's a frightening thought after what I've been taught all my life. Right now God might be doing something else like playing chess with one of the angels and not looking at me and I need him. But that might explain why babies fall out of windows and God don't catch them. That might be the answer. God don't have full attention on you. Now why wouldn't God have full attention on you? Because God is in you and you're not keeping the light of God on out of the darkness to watch this world. You have cut off the light. You're not conscious of the presence of God in you. You're afraid of me and I need him. But that might explain why babies fall out of windows and God don't catch them. That might be the answer. 
God don't have full attention on you. Now why wouldn't God have full attention on you? Because God is in you and you're not keeping the light of God on out of the darkness to watch this world. You have cut off the light. You're not conscious of the presence of God in you. You're afraid of that reality because with that reality comes responsibility that you don't want. You don't want to be responsible for all the stuff that's taking place in the world, God. So it's much easier to put God off in a remote place, out of reach, and look up and worship Him. You hear me? It is much easier than traveling inside and finding the seat of God inside and letting it work its way out. It is so much safe or so much secure for me to say, no, God is up in heaven. And when someone says, where, how far, so don't blaspheme. Don't you question God. God is just beyond question. But he said he put himself in me. Is he in me if he said it? If he said it, and he said it, then he's in me. So when you see me, you, I heard that before. I think I heard a man say, when you see me, you see God. And they love him for it. But when I say it, I'm a blasphemer. If you say it, they'll say you're crazy. You ain't God. You say, no, I'm not God. But when you see me, you see God. Boy, you crazy. But I can open the Bible and Jesus say, when you see me as you guys say, that's a beautiful statement. <laughs> what has happened? The manifestation of devil's power on earth moves through us controls our emotions and our thinking and has clipped the connection we have with God inside making us look for God outside and looking for God outside is limiting God because it's saying he's in a specific place somewhere and they call it a place where's he at he's in heaven have you ever went to a dictionary and looked up the word heaven to find out what it means really no most people have it. Heaven is nothing but a derivative of the word haven. You know what that is? A marina. You know what a marina is? Where ships dock. So when you say heaven, you're saying a place where ships go. Look at a computer in the dictionary. So you're saying God's in heaven. He arrived there. From where? In what? You know what they're talking about? They're talking about their version of God leaving earth and ascending into heaven. They're not talking about God the Father. They're talking about God the Son when they speak of God being in heaven. I'm going to tell you why. You want to know why? Because God would not be in heaven. God would be heaven. Because if God was in heaven, God would be inside something and God cannot be confined any one place at any given time he's too powerful for that but his son can and his children can and he can be everywhere in each and every one of you but not solely in you nor was he solely in Christ and that's why Christ said all of you he was saying to them don't you overstand that all of you are the children of god all of y'all are god incarnated the life of god the breath of life i breathed into man it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things was made by him it was not anything made it was made without him in him was the life and the life was the light in the man and light shining in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not boom john chapter one what does it mean though in the beginning was the word Someone spoke the word <laughs> and there's no reason to speak a word if someone else is not listening. If you go in your room with the intentions of taking a shirt or a blouse out of the dresser, you don't start from the kitchen and say, I'm going to go in the room and take a shirt out the dresser. 
I am taking the shirt out the dresser. I have the shirt. I'm going into the bathroom to put the shirt on. The only reason why you would do that is if you said to your brother, listen, I'm going in the room to get my shirt. Don't bother me. Don't be in the bathroom when I come out because I'm going in the bathroom to put my shirt on. That's why you have a word in the beginning of a conversation talking to somebody. But when you raise the question of who was God talking to, they say, nobody, because God was alone in the beginning. What about talking to the angels? Well, that would have to, then you would have to be saying the angels were created before man. Well, were they? Okay, so was God talking to the angels when he said, let us make man in, huh? Yes, what else did he say then? Let us make man what? <laughs> so that man is in the image of God and angels at the same time. So now which part are you in now? <laughs> what part are you now? Are you right now in the image of God or in the image of an angel? Because he says, I breathed into you the breath of life and you became a living. And then he, called, then he told them that the Holy Ghost is the spirit or ruach or nephesh of God, right? God's spirit brings the messages from God in the form of the Holy Ghost, symbolic of a dove. So then you are really in what form? You are really in a soul form as an angel. You say, well, Dad, what am I doing here? And this world is lit up. You are a fallen angel. You just don't want to admit you fell from grace and you are in hell right now. And it can get worse. You say, this is hell? Tell me, Doc, what makes this hell? Okay, right? <laughs> Let me get in the middle for this. <laughs> what makes this place hell let me do this here god now remember now they haven't told you that there's two creative forces in god one creates cavities and headaches i'm getting there god created man in his image and after his likeness thus man and woman are in the image and after the likeness of god and what god does and is capable of doing and does and is capable of doing or they're not in the image and after the likeness of god they were lied to now which is it the Bible says you're in the image and have the likeness of God, so you are in his image and have the powers of God, or you're not. Which is it? The Bible says you are, so you what? So then God gets headaches. And God gets uh, ulcers. And God gets uh, asthma. And God gets cancer. And God gets heart attacks, AIDS. Because if man is in the image and likeness of God, who is responsible for the malfunctioning part of the man. At what point did man stop being God in his purity and become God in a degrading, decrepit, falling apart, old age, breakdown, stiff bones, oh my God. When did it happen? When did the pain of arthritis come in? Because God, God has arthritis? It came in when you fell from grace that's how you know you're in hell because you start off with this child she is as healthy as she can be her bones are good her eyes are good her teeth are good unless these, these kids are feeding her candy all day and speeding up the process her organs are all good and healthy but then what happens they start to deteriorate 